Hi, and welcome to the Rampacine.net podcast. Uh, this is Blackstar of Blackstar Productions, and with me here is Miguel Chavez and uh, Cody. And uh, we're here again. We're going to do a quick impromptu thing because Narcogen, uh, unfortunately, isn't feeling very well. His uh, voice is apparently suffering uh, due to illness. So we're going to do a short and sweet uh, podcast, which is basically going to give people an overview of what to expect coming up Monday uh, when Reach Beta finally goes live for the general populace. And uh, we're going to give you some impressions and some uh, information, some things that uh, you will come to expect with uh, the weapons and a couple of maps that you will play coming up. Uh, Miguel, would you like to give us a, a rundown here of uh, what you'd like to talk about first here? Well, thanks, Blackstar. Uh, I think uh, folks are going to be very excited come this Monday. If you're um, if you're jumping right in, you're going to see that the uh, that this beta actually has quite a few players and things are going to be popping. It's definitely when things started this Thursday, there was a lot of apprehension as to how the uh, beta was going to take off. Uh, and I think it's safe to say now that many people, uh, Cody included, uh, who first came in not sure, are actually quite pleased with how things are, are going. This is still Halo. It still has, uh, has the same philosophy of gameplay. And you can definitely see that they've tried to bring back some of the gameplay um, stylings, why don't we call it, that existed before even Halo 2. Cody, do you have anything you want to start off with? Uh, yeah, I, I guess we can talk about uh, some of the new uh, mechanics in the game. Um, you may notice that if you're using the uh, the, new, the new pistol or the new uh, DMR, uh, you may notice that when you uh, pull the trigger, your reticle gets very large. And when it does that, the uh, accuracy of the weapon decreases greatly. And this is kind of a new addition to you know the, the Halo universe here. Um, and it actually plays a really big part in how you have to use these weapons. And so if you're not conscious of it, then you're you're not going to be able to succeed using them. Skilled players are definitely going to have to pay attention to uh, to the reticle in order to uh, to score kills. After you uh, you pull the trigger, there's going to be a little bit of recoil, and the reticle is going to grow very very quickly. And so when it does that, your accuracy is going to decrease uh, quite a bit. Uh, and the only way to uh, get it back down is to simply wait. So basically, what this is going to entail is with the, the pistol and the DMR, you're kind of going to have to uh, learn how to time your shots uh, because obviously. If you're close up, accuracy isn't quite as important because uh, you know the enemy is larger in your field of view, so you don't need all that accuracy. Uh, but when you're farther away, you you definitely need to be more accurate. So you kind of need to play around with it a little bit and determine you know how much of a delay you need to add uh, between shots based on what what distance you're at. And then as far as the the, the DMR goes, it's definitely it, it's not like the battle rifle anymore. Uh, you know, you're not going to be using it at, at close range. Um, it, it's more of a mid to long range weapon, um, and up close, the pistol is definitely going to dominate you. Uh, so just kind of think about that before you, you know, take the DMR and start running around with it as you would with the battle rifle. And um, the the and the uh, the other thing that I found very helpful is if you want to get five shot kills, um, to uh, to get four body shots first Kill because they joy. do the same amount of damage as a headshot and will drop the shields. And then once the shields are dropped, just kind of wait for the reticle to come back and then get the headshot. It, it, you have to really think about being patient and uh, it definitely pays off because if you try to get the headshot and you uh, have a large reticle, you're probably going to miss and it's going to cause you more harm than good. The next one that uh, you had on your list, as I'm reading, is the uh, the plasma launcher, and I personally have only actually gotten a chance to use this once, maybe twice. And when I did, I enjoyed it. I I thought it was kind of interesting. I I can't say I've really gotten the hang of it though. I only was able to make uh, one or two kills with it. It's tossing grenades. You can toss up to four, but you have to preload them and release them on the targets. But they will track. So in that way, it's almost like the the rock the uh, rocket launcher lock on for targets. So if you're running around looking for particular players, you can actually lock onto them, and they will track the shots. But also, if you were taking out vehicles, you can throw three or four out and and nail them like we saw in the uh, the released videos. If you are tagged and you hear you know the the sound of the plasma grenade, you can throw down your uh, your armor lock, and that will prevent you from dying. Okay, the last two weapons, uh, Miguel, uh, do you want to comment at all? The last two ones uh, I wanted to mention here, one which is the rocket launcher, which for me just seems to be pretty much the rocket launcher. Uh, it seems very, very effective as, as usual. But the other one is the focus beam, which is also a new one. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about those and your experiences with them? 
Right, yeah. Before I talk about them, just I know folks are going to first want to quickly figure out where those weapons are. And just for you to know, in Powerhouse, the rocket launcher is down by the waterfalls. The grenade launcher is over by the bathroom. And the focus beam is down in the concrete room with, with, the, with the pillars. The quick takeaway that I get from these weapons are that they are still, you know, powerhouse weapons. The rocket launcher has a really nice uh, blast radius now, which uh, was different, I think, in Halo 3. Um, it's very potent. The, uh, the focus beam is kind of brings us back to the lasers uh, from, from, from the previous games. It's kind of you focus it on uh, on the enemy, and it's a, it works great at a distance. The rocket launcher especially comes into play a lot in many of the games, especially if you decide to strap on a jetpack. Well, yeah, that, that kind of segues into the next uh, level that I think would take this. That pretty much covers all the major weapons that uh, you're going to be uh, playing with in the maps coming up uh, in the beta. But uh, the next one is the armor abilities, and we, we kind of brushed over a couple of different ones before. So if you have a sprint ability, uh, that one actually allows you to run fast for a certain amount of time. Uh, I think sprint is really, really good. Um, that's you, you know, that's the loadout I usually end up picking. Um, I'd say I'd probably choose choose that loadout a little bit more than any of the others, um, just because it, it it it's really good for you know getting around uh, from place to place. It's really good if you're being shot from long range. You know, if somebody's really good with the DMR and they're putting shots on you, uh, sprint is really good for getting out of the way and getting safe. Another thing it's really good at is uh, to use to rush people who have long range weapons. Um, so you know, if you're if somebody's you know up on the dirt path and in powerhouse and they're just killing a lot of your guys with uh, with the DMR, you can uh, you can sprint up and get in really close to them and just hit them with some melees. It's very hard uh, for uh, a player like that to deal with that. I hear that um, a common commonly used combo now is sprint along with the brute hammer. And that you uh, can sprint up, run real quick, and just mow down the enemy. Yeah, and, and sprint combined with the hammer with the sword is also very good. Uh, next one is the jet pack. How how was your experience uh, with the jet uh, jet pack at all? It was originally that I uh, I avoided the jet pack only because it seemed to be kind of tricky. I, that I that I use a bumper jumper, um, and holding down the X was kind of a problem for me. But I got used to it, and now I'm seeing where it really pays off, especially in map. In a map like Sword Base, where getting across from floor to floor uh, on foot can be a problem, it becomes really important, uh, especially in single flag CTF, where you need to quickly get to the other side and uh, defend your, your your flag. Yeah, um, it, it's also really good for, um, especially on uh, on uh, Sword Base and on Powerhouse. There are certain power weapons that are. are really easy to get with the jetpack. So yeah, so about the the uh, next armor ability, the uh, armor lock or lockdown, could you describe a little bit about your experiences with that? Yeah, it's a it, it's something that I kind of didn't discover until uh, until just recently how useful it was. Um, you know, because when you lay it down, there's this EMP burst that can drop the the uh, your opponent's shield. So if somebody's really close to you, you can use the armor lock and then let go of it, and then they have no shield, giving you a huge advantage in combat. So even if you're alone, it can still be an advantage if you have you know one guy chasing after you. But it's really effective if you know you're about to die and you have your team around, because then you can kind of you know plop down and and wait for a while and have your teammates take out some of the other guys, and then you can can continue on your way. Okay, great. Uh, the next one up is the uh, active camo, and now instead of just uh, having it as a power up on the the map, where you actually use it at a particular moment, or people would you know fight over getting it and using it for X amount of uh, uh, time before it were, uh, to respond, uh, you've actually got uh, the option of picking that every time that you actually come back into the game, and now it's it is combining two separate. Uh, elements before one of them from Halo 3 which was a piece of equipment which is the radar jammer which puts false signals on your radar everywhere and now they're kind of incorporated the two of them now with camo when you fire that up it now puts little fake red oh. dots of enemies around all in your radar within a certain radius I think it's like yeah. 25 meters um, on your radar uh, like around you know players with you while you're camoed the last one I think we have is Vade now so this is, is elites only and this is the tuck and roll feature that we've actually seen in the videos before. This is where you actually see that elite dodge that they've had since since the original Halo, uh, where the elites can jump or roll from you know side to side. And now you can control that on command. How, how much fun have you guys had with those? 
Oh, it's been a lot of fun, especially with the little sound effects they throw in with the, the elites <laughs> grunting and and all that. It's very fun. But otherwise, yeah. it's um, very effective. Lost it's something elite. that I still have to remember to actually use because it does come... It very much uh, helps evade, uh, you know, someone who's trying to stick you with a needle rifle or or, or just plain, just try to battle you the, the, up close. It's a great way to get to be able to, to, to dodge someone. All right, excellent. Well, I certainly hope that everyone gets a chance to uh, enjoy this little uh, taste preview of what you should expect on Monday. Um, we should be returning sometime soon with uh, Narcogen for a Rampancy.net podcast uh, the moment the beta does go live for everyone. Uh, so this one hopefully will come out uh, uh, very shortly. And we certainly hope uh, a quick recovery to Narcogen. I'd like to thank uh, Miguel, uh, Miguel Chavez from uh, Bungie Sightings and uh, Cody from High Speed Halo uh, for coming on today. And uh, we hope you guys enjoy the beta. Play safe. 